Okay. So we're calling this Sylvie answering interesting questions. Name pending, but that'll probably stick. So this is a question that I found on Reddit and I find it interesting because I am Moi Cow, I am a knee fighter. So anytime people are asking questions about knees, um, it's not really something that I'm like, I can answer that, but it's like, oh, that's interesting. I'd like to think about that. How does that work for me kind of thing? So uh, in this question, um, the first portion of it is how to time knees, which is very interesting because people actually don't even think about timing knees <laughs> until they're already in kind of an intermediate level, which is cool. So uh, the person asking the question said that they understood how to time teeps is to like look for someone's shoulders moving. Um, and so this was not the same kind of um, tell that they felt was working for knees. So there are different knees. There are knees that are when someone's coming towards you and there are knees when you're stalking someone down. So one of my favorite things that Karahat taught me is that anytime you see someone's weight come onto their front leg, they basically can only fire their power shot from there or bring a block up. So when someone is coming towards me, it's basically like when you see someone is coming with their punches and their weight is coming onto their front foot, that's a really good time to time your knee if someone is coming towards you because their weight is shifting this way. So there's this entire, they call it chon, which is like when you clash with someone. The important point in that, and this person asking the question also raises this, that how do you avoid being punched like at that same time? As the weight is coming forward, all the weight is here. There's no way to avoid it at this point. So if you pivot off to the side a little bit, not a lot, it's not like a deep pivot like this, but if someone's coming towards you and you kind of matador a little bit to the side, you can do this like clashing. They're gonna come into your knee. Um, Karahat also has, as someone's coming towards you, you take like a step back so that their weight's coming, they're following you like this, and then you can just reverse. So you're like back reverse like this. Um, when I'm timing knees, generally, I tend to be the one moving forward. So what I'm timing my knees for is um, when someone is kind of in a curled defensive state is when knees are really good. So if you can pop someone in the face first and get them to do something like this, that's a really good time to land a knee. Um, if you're in the clinch, a really good time to land a knee is right after you've turned. You wanna kind of off balance someone. So if someone's coming towards you and I'm talking about like weight transfer coming forward, that's a good time to land a knee. Anytime someone's slightly off balance because they're coming back or they're covering or something like this, this is a really good time to land a knee. The last part of his question was really interesting. And unfortunately, I don't know entirely uh, what his positioning is because I can't see it. But in my head, I can kind of picture it. He was saying that when he does a knee, he puts his right hand on the left shoulder. So this is an orthodox fighter. Right hand on the left bicep of the opponent. And then the other one is coming up on the head. So you'll often see this kind of thing like this. I don't know whether his hand is on the inside or the outside, but he said that at five foot five, he has a hard time bringing his hand up on to the head. I wish I was five five, <laughs> I'm five one and some change. Uh, I have a really hard time putting my hand on someone's head as well, unless you've already like body punched and gotten them kind of down and then you can kind of go on the head like this. A place you can always grab is here. When Yokun Pan does it, we call it hitching the trailer because that's what it feels like. He just kind of like hooks onto it. What's really cool about grabbing the neck across like this instead of going for the head is that when you come across, you're already guarding yourself like this. So by reaching across, you're guarding against anything coming this way, which part of the question um, was also, how do you like block as you're coming in? You can, you can block with like a, Dracula type long high thing like this. But when you're coming across to grab the side of the neck, you're blocking really, really well here. <sighs> Ajahn Surat does this with kicks. This is really good. But so I, in my head, I see it as like climbing a ladder. When you're climbing a ladder, it's like one rung, two rung. So you basically parry their front arm out of the way. And then this one comes across the neck. And you can land your knee this way. And what's awesome about it is because you already have their neck here, after you've landed that knee, you can basically pivot around. You've dipped their body down. They're going to be like this. And you can land a second knee. So they kind of work together where you're like pivot, grab, knee, turn, knee. <laughs> step, pause, pivot, pause, pivot, step, step. That kind of thing. 
Um, something that I really like, and this goes with kind of multiple parts of this question, um, is in terms of timing and in terms of like where to grab and how to like not get hit while you're trying to land a knee. Because basically anytime you're kneeing, you're like a submarine to anything that's coming up here. So there are some schools of thought that teach you to lean back on a knee because punches are coming. So you're basically trying to avoid punches and throwing these long knees. If you throw lots of knees, if you're Muay Cao, you don't want to lean back because it limits how many you can throw. So that means you have to be really tight up top in terms of how you're protecting and latching and grabbing and things like this in order to continue with your knees because we don't really lean back on them. But one of my favorite things, and this answers multiple parts of this question in terms of timing and how to defend yourself for those knees, is again, what I was saying, what I've been doing kind of right now is when someone's coming towards me or if I'm, it's Yod Kun Pan right now a lot, if I'm coming forward and someone is orthodox, this front hand is basically, their front hand is right here. When you come outside of it, you're totally in their blind spot and there's not a whole lot they can do. You can land a kick if you're a little bit long. So you kind of do this like pivot out and you can land a kick, but it's perfect for a knee if you step past their foot. So you kind of like pivot out and then this foot is stepping past their lead foot and you can land into an open side that way, um, which is a really, really devastating uh, strike into someone's guts if they're not anticipating it. So that's Sylvie answering interesting questions. I found that question really interesting about timing and defense on knees. Um, one of the ways to train timing, and this is for anything, but this is really important for knees um, and what you were talking about with teeps about like seeing the tells in someone's body, don't break it down too much. You're gonna start feeling where people's weight is or where their vulnerabilities are or whether you've closed them up like this with a strike first and then the knee can follow. You really wanna kind of like feel where that rhythm is rather than like memorize where that rhythm is because people have slightly different um, cadences. So uh, basically just throw as many as you can <laughs> in sparring and be bad at it and be like, not that, not that, not that. And you'll start to feel uh, where that timing is. And then you'll be able to answer this question for people as well. <laughs>